A couple of weeks ago, we thrashed an M2 coupe around an empty racetrack for half a day. And it was honestly the most fun you could ever imagine in an M-powered car. Now, we're back at another racetrack with a new M-powered coupe. It's called the M4 CS. It's twice as much as that humble M2, but it packs a lot more ponies under the bonnet. What I really want to know is, is this thing possibly twice as much fun? The M4 CS lands in showrooms as something of a Goldilocks pick, on paper at least. At $211,000, it's $70,000 more than the entry-level M4 Pure Coupe, but still $85,000 less than the hardcore M4 GDS released last year in a limited production run. And yes, at that money, it's also $100,000 more than the award-winning M2, the talk of town. But to that, BMW's M division has given us more performance, less weight, and added dynamism, borrowing parts from both the regular M4 and the sold out M4 GDS. Now this is where the equation starts to make a bit more sense. You've got a three litre inline six lifted from the M4 competition, but boost has been wound up. So the resulting 338 kilowatts and 600 Newton meters actually makes this the fastest accelerating M car that money will currently buy you. 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds, at least until the new M5 arrives. Straight line speed isn't the CS's only party trick. BMW has shed 34 kilograms of weight from the regular M4, the CS tipping the scales at 1,580 kilograms. And it looks the goods as well, with a carbon fibre front splitter, carbon roof, bonnet and boot lid, and staggered wheels shod with sticky Michelin Pilot Cup Sport 2 rubber. Pretty cool stuff. Now, forget the comparison with the M2 just for a moment, because this thing actually arrives trying to address some of the pitfalls of the M4. Um, and I think on face value it definitely does that. There's a little bit more stability in the rear, the steering feels on the money, and there's a little bit more predictability, um, just in the way that you can drive this thing on the track and it, it almost encourages you to push on, whereas the regular M4 and the M4 competition almost are imposing on a track and they take a bit of balls to get it right. The inline six is mated to a seven speed dual clutch automatic sending drive to the rear wheels. And naturally you have different modes for the steering, adaptive dampers, gearbox and engine. Now the big challenge for the M4 CS is that breadth of performance. It really needs to sort of ride the line between the sportiness of the GDS and the overall comfort and road bias of the M4. Does it do that? Yes and no. I think the powertrain's really on the mark. There's a little bit more uh, linearity with the way that this thing makes its power, it's not so snappy and it means that you can push it a little bit on the track. Uh, the rear end does feel a little bit more stable, but in terms of bridging the gap between M4 and M4 GDS, well, this thing still feels miles off the pace of the GDS. It just doesn't have that tied down feel and overall finesse that you get with the M4 GDS. It feels more like a wicked up M4 competition. In terms of that inherent playfulness that you get in the M2, it is a step closer. You can have a little bit of fun <laughs> um, throwing it around corners, and it is playful without being quite as imposing as the M4 competition. Now these cars are fitted with optional carbon ceramic brakes, which at $15,000 basically push the price tag closer to 250 all up. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, it is a lot better car, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure this is exactly the Goldilocks pick that I had have imagined. The M4 CS has all the bones of a solid M car, but for now, we're going to reserve judgment on whether it lives up to the hype for a more extended drive. 